six years ago, uh, Paul and I started what was at the time East Anglia's first ever CrossFit gym. Um, it was born from me trying to get rich, um, saw that CrossFit was a growing brand and wanted to jump on the bandwagon. I, I like business. Um, met Paul, he's in my opinion the best trainer I've ever met. So we decided to join forces and set up a CrossFit gym. Um, and we were successful in doing that. Um, but as CrossFit grew, more and more gyms kind of popped up all over the place. And we felt as though we were losing control um, of what we wanted to achieve. It got to a point where the, the, what we were offering in the gym wasn't in line with our values. Um, so one of the main things, it, so it wasn't in line with what we wanted to deliver, I wanted to deliver as a coach. Um, and then also because there was, it wasn't in line with what we want, I wanted to deliver as a coach, we kind of stagnated, didn't we? And stagnated yeah. in terms of our, our income. So we were basically at the same, yeah. at the same level for quite a, quite a while. My area of expertise is coaching people, is training people, and that's what I, what I do best. Um, so once people are in the gym, great, I know exactly what to do with them. Um, I can get them into the, the, the body, I can get them in the body that they want in and the, in the shape that they want. But getting people through the door was the, the major issue and, I, and I've kind of purchased lots of different online courses and lots of different loads, loads of marketing things yeah. trying to develop my, my own knowledge. So that was taking up all of our home time. So Paul would be working full time in the gym and then doing an online marketing course at the weekend. Yeah. Um, so we, our quality of life was just getting worse and worse and worse. I, I spent probably two years trying to do it myself and it, and it did consume all of my time, which meant it took time away from like family time. It took time away from what I love about the actual business itself and that was like coaching the people so I'd spend more time on the marketing side of things than I would actually mm. servicing our members and help helping our members. I purchased a it was a kind of do-it-yourself um, Facebook marketing course and the promise was at the end of it you'd, you have all your sales funnel set up and it was going to be fantastic and I got halfway through this and I thought I can't I can't do this on my own <laughs> I really can't do it on my own um, so, and then Mark, one of Martin's adverts popped up on Facebook and it was advertising like a, a done for you pro process. Mm -hmm. um, and basically he was going to do the adverts potentially for us. So he had a Facebook group, so I joined that and I just basically sat there lurking, trying to get a bit of information, consuming some of his, his free stuff for a while. Um, like I'd kind of been doing for the, like the last, last two years really, just trying bits and bobs. Um, but then he dropped me a, a message on Facebook and said, what, what are you doing in the group? Can I help you? So actually you can. He said, right, let's jump on a call. Um, so I spoke to him um, and on that telephone call, um, he's quite, he was quite straight to the point because I told him that we weren't really making much money and um, I didn't really enjoy what we were doing. And his answer was, why, are you still, why do you still have the business? Why don't you just sell it? I was like, oh, okay. Um, that, is, that is an option, um, but it's not an option I want to take. I know one option is to close it, but it's not going to happen, so what do we do? So Mike said, well, this is what I can, mm. what I can do um, for you. And I think I've, the last time I saw Paul that excited about anything was when we were actually opening the, the gym six years ago. It was not just about revenue, we needed a product that we needed to believe in. And then when I spoke to Z and, and Sean and then visited um, Stockport, I could, the way they were to delivering the, the, the programme, the strong programme, the fit programme, is what I'd say got in my head and yeah. what I had been doing outside of our actual business for the last two years. Yeah. So I could sit really, it kind of cemented in me that we've got a potential that makes some money because they knew what they were doing was making money and something which um, I really believed in as a product that I could hand on heart deliver yeah. to the, and that is something that I really needed. For the last year, yeah we've had the, the gym as a business but because I wasn't enjoying it, because it wasn't what I wanted to do, I actually 
moved away from it and I was working at a full-time job as a fitness trainer in the, in the fire service. Yeah. Um, so to top off, with, I'm working at a full-time job plus trying to run the business, the marketing side of things mm. and coaching and opening Sundays. Yeah. It was just became just this all consuming. Seven day a week. And when no I, money. and that's not actually earned any money in no. the gym. The last like six years, we're a great team, but we've been doing it alone. Yeah. And um, we've been doing the mark, we're doing everything. Um, and it's to our fault to a certain extent that we take everything on our shoulders. Um, but now we've got kind of a team behind us. We now we've got a structure in place in yeah. for the for the for leads coming in, for sales yeah. coming in. We've got a structure in place of how you greet a member at the at the door. Yeah. There's so much support that we've got, which we didn't have before, mm. it lightens the load on your shoulders. We retained a scarily small number of members, I'm talking less than 10 from a database of over 100, because people that want to do CrossFit want to do CrossFit. So off they went and I, wave, I wish them well because five years ago I, I would have probably done exactly the same mm -hmm. if I didn't have the business because I was really into CrossFit at one point. I was really, you know, one of those CrossFit uh, loving people. And um, so, yeah, we literally, we announced the change at the Christmas party because I didn't want to drink with people and then send them a letter. I thought that was gutless. So we strapped on a massive pair of balls, announced it at the Christmas party, and people were getting their coats on and walking out while I was talking. 98% of our members, which, which is over 100 members, went. went straight away. But from that December the 17th, yeah. over 100 of our members went, so our turnover went down to what, less, than, it was pretty less than 500 pounds a month. That was the turnover, and that is now February, March. Mm. We are, we're about where we were, aren't we? We're, well, we're about yeah, yeah. not not too far yeah, off where where we were, and um, within within two months. Three, yeah, two months. It was without a shadow of a doubt the best decision, and even when we had three members on our database from a hundred and. 20 we have never once for one second gone oh shit we've done the wrong thing i would definitely um get external help with the things yeah. that i'm not 100 percent confident in confident in um and that is yeah anything other than coaching people so yeah delegate it out get people who know what they're doing yeah um and then that's going to tee you up for the, the long-term success. Concentrate on the things that you're really good at, really good at yeah. get people in for the, for the rest of it and that's what we've done now. We've never been at a point anywhere near that I would ever consider not having my job um, and it's only in the last week isn't it that actually that's started to become a new goal for me and a new vision to be in yeah. the business full-time because I just totally love it. So this is what I want to do now. Yeah.